Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, tonight we have the joy of cleaning the sharp nose pit viper's uh, cage because he devastated his water dish in the front part of his cage, as you can see. Now, I, I could probably spot clean that and stuff, but I think I'll just uh, remove him, even though that's dangerous all by itself, and that way I can uh, take care of it uh, without him being around. Come on, I know I touched you. Yeah, there we go. I know. I don't often mess with you. It's because... But then the Kistradon's uh, ability to make keepers scream at running like a little girl from the room uh, is well known, and also the fact I don't have antivenin for it. And that's certainly an antivenin that you would like to have as quickly as possible if you encounter uh, their venom. If I think I have snakes that I've called finger rotters in the past. Uh, well, that guy is a hand rotter. I actually saw a video on Facebook or someplace around there. Oh, that's glued in there. That's it just, uh, coming out. Um, there was this sharp nosed pit viper in a, in a pail or a tub, and this is somewhere in Asia, perhaps even where they're found, and the guy is slapping it, abusing it. <laughs> well, it only took a couple of whacks for Mr. Sharp or Miss Sharp Nose to let him know that this was not a very good uh, way to make friends with them, uh, and he got bit. And oh my God, he's definitely, definitely uh, looks like his thumb was going bye-bye. Uh, it was totally black, and that's a damn good indication that there's nothing viable there. Just take the patient to the OR and remove it and just be done with it. Otherwise, you're flirting with infection and everything else. So... Uh, We treat the uh, sharp nose with lots of respect. And if they want to explode and go off in different directions, like a balloon that you uh, blew up and just let go before you tied it, uh, we let them do that. Yes, they levitate very nicely. It's much better that they, they expend I'm some energy. On that side. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, it's better they expend the energy and uh, get a little tired out, then you try to restrain them and uh, them really getting upset. Yeah, restraining these animals is a sure way to make them go into the stratosphere. <clears throat> okay, the rest of this is good. I like to keep the backs on the dry side. So they have a dry spot if they wish to be dry, and a moist spot if they need a little bit more humidity in their system. I can't believe that guy was slapping the snake. <laughs> yeah, it was an unbelievable video. It's like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, this is, this is an equivalent to, uh, uh, you know, trying to slap a bear trap with your hand and see if you can evade the jaws when it goes close. It's going to get you.
Hi, I see you. I see a little, uh, little death adders looking out at me like, hey, you didn't feed me yet. Okay, so this is nice and clean now. It's still on the left side. Uh, he won't be able to get into that. It's a little too tall for him. And I have to get a different water dish because that one will need some soaking and cleaning. And yeah, it's going to need some chiseling from the looks of it. Uh, all right. Well, let me get that, and uh, we can try to put him back in. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, someone looking very hopeful, always. Hello, Miss Terrificus. So we don't have anything for you tonight. You got a treat last night. And one of our rhino vipers. And there's another. And our male puff adder, who's quite upset because his light is out. Well, I mean, you know, I don't think the light has anything to do with it. Puff adders are just always upset. Okay, so I'm not going to put water in it because I'll just probably spill it or he'll get substrate in it or something uh, so we will just uh, try to safely get him out of here now that he's had time to think about the fact that I disturbed him hi bud I see you're in launch position yeah, I know I know when these pothrops but no, sorry, it's not a, it is a lancehead, but it's an Asian lancehead. It's not a Bothrops. It's an Akis, used to be a Kisterdon. It's Dynakisterdon. Um, when they're sitting anywhere and they're looking directly up at you, that's the time to, uh, to really start to worry. Now, why are you, uh, taking my hook from me, huh? Be a nice guy. You're thinking about being a nice guy. Hmm? All right, well, we'll come here and we'll visit with you for a second, since you're not zooming around the room, which you could do at any time. Are we zoomed in? Hmm? Oh, yes, we're zoomed in. See how quickly he accelerated from not moving to moving fairly fast? It's better to let them sort of go into their cages if they're uh, so interested. So we're just going to shut this. A little later I'll put some water in. Mr. Terrificus, <clears throat> in my younger days I was like getting these very interesting shots and stuff. Uh, I'm not so interested in uh, getting up close because sometimes they're they're very predictable in what they're going to do. Hi there, how you doing? And now you're not going to do it because you're on camera. You're not going to do it. Lori, <laughs> that's what she does on a regular basis, generally when you first open the door. And... Uh, Miss Terrificus is uh, famous for the uh, broken neck effect. Their venom is uh, lots of myotoxins, but a very particular neurotoxin uh, that's, I won't say unique to crotalids, but heavily present in crotalids called crotoxin. Uh, it's a neurotoxin 
the reason why they call it broke neck uh, uh, snake is because you go into flaccid polaris, uh, paralysis and you, you lose your muscle tone in your neck and your head flops around like your neck is broken. Um, meanwhile, that's happening. It's breaking down in the myoglobin in your muscles in your body and clogging your kidneys and, and sending you uh, careening towards death's door. So that's why we open the cage uh, with tools and not with fingers because uh, I'm too old for this crap as one would say but not in such <laughs> polite terms. Uh, I am not going to take the risk uh, to get a great action shot. You saw, sort of saw it uh, without me being near the cage. Uh, I used to draw them out but uh, yeah she's very food oriented and uh, uh, she expects food every time that cage door opens, like some of our other friends here. Um, however, uh, she got fed last night. It may not have been enough to make her happy, but uh, we don't want her getting a big fat butt. There you go. <laughs> They're so funny. Yes, they are. Come on, here you go. Here you go. Come on. Come on. There. Oops, yeah. that other one's looking. Gotta get him something quick. There you go. There's the other one's heading off into the sunset. Take out food. Come on. No, I want my brother or sisters. Here. Come on. This is the one that always gives me grief. Plus, I think it's the male. Come on. Come on. There. All four of them. Oh, that one's almost done. Yeah. That, that one, one is done. That wow. one sucked them down. I think I'm going to have to either move them up to two or maybe it's, well, I think this is still a good size. Yeah, I would do two of these. Two of them, yeah. It's funny, he's on feed now all of a sudden. <laughs> I am a person of interest. Yes. Other than that, he ignores and pretends that... I'm not even around. Hello. Yes, yes, you are on feed again. Oh, that was a hot spot. The wrong direction. Funny stinks. <laughs> wow. Boy, they are really gulping them down. That's good. Well, except for that guy. Baby squamager can. Do you see yourself, huh? Yep, that one's making tracks. <laughs> yeah, he needs something to, to back up on. Otherwise, he's going over the edge. Back in, huh? Oh, go. There you go. Oh, that one is getting long. God, I remember when these things were microscopic. Mm hmm. Well, it's nice we only lost one. I'll go for a swim. Oh, that one's uh, uh, chewing on it. And he's all poised for action still. Oh, there's a little water cobra looking at me like you've got fish. Maybe later. Yeah, that guy's still just thinking about it. Well, he's just chewing on it. 
everybody else is in, huh? Yep. Yeah, it's best to keep them separate uh, right now because one may still want something to eat and grab the other end of that. So it's best to keep them, give them a little bit of distance. Well, yeah, especially since that's how accidents happen. He, if he does grab it, he may just keep eating and end up eating his sibling. Mm. I see a taipan coiled up over there. You know, there was just uh, a squam bite um, down south. I won't say too much uh, about location and stuff. Person uh, took a squam bite to the finger. Um, required uh, some antivenin and uh, uh, probably will need. Uh, uh, perhaps some skin grafting to the finger. It uh, took quite a hit as far as uh, you know having some tissue injury, which is normal. Um, normally, you wouldn't give people antivenin for squam bites unless they had significant uh, coagulopathies. That is very prolonged bleeding time, low fibrinogen, low platelets. Uh, so uh, they were treated with uh, South African polyvalent initially and then was switched to Ekis uh, uh, anti-venom from South Africa. Um, and that seems to have uh, resolved the blood issues. So we'll see, uh, hopefully she doesn't lose uh, uh, too much of uh, their finger. Squams are very potent. Their closest living relatives are bitis um, and echis. Who was it that said something about them climbing trees? Yes. Echis climbed, that decided to climb trees? Yes, <laughs> they're called Echis, that's right, exactly. Echis that decided to climb trees. So, uh, remember that uh, hobbyists out there who have uh, uh, these uh, arboreal variety of Echis. Yeah, 